I have a Unity Post Mount Spotlight that's been installed on my 1998 Durango for the last 15 years, and it's seen better days. The light doesn't turn on half the time, the light's reflective surface is flaking off, and the handle is loose. I'll be upgrading this to the Unity LED lamp kit and troubleshooting the issues I'm having in this video. You can jump to whatever section is relevant to you using the chapters. I'll be using the Unity U8547 LED lamp kit, which I'll have a link to in the description. The lamp itself is well made, sealed, and has posts on the back to attach it to your existing wiring. To start the replacement, you'll need to remove this small screw on the bottom. I used a 332nd Allen wrench to remove it. You'll see mine is quite rusty, which will give you a guess on the mess we'll find inside. After that, you simply turn the outer ring counterclockwise and the lamp will be able to come out. We can see now that water slowly rusted away the old steel frame and caused the reflective material to flake off. The new aluminum frame of the LED lamp kit should help prevent any corrosion in the future. The next step is to remove the old wires. Mine were really stuck, but just keep pulling until they disconnect. There are little foam inserts that keep everything in its place, and those will be getting replaced so you can remove them. Next, I just cleaned up the interior because it was really a mess. Next, you'll need to remove the nut holding the ground wire and lamp housing in place. I used a 14 millimeter wrench for this. After that, you can take off the bullet terminal for the positive side of the wiring. as well as the lock washer and ring ground terminal. And make sure to retain the lock washer and the nut for reassembly. Now you can take the housing off and you'll see that it's keyed on the bottom so it can rotate. After that, I cleaned everything up a little bit and that should be all the cleaning I need to do in here. I find it interesting how this is able to infinitely swivel, and I just thought I'd show it for a moment. Next, it's time to troubleshoot my electrical issues. I started by taking the back cap off by removing the two screws on either side. They're just Phillips heads, so a regular screwdriver will work. Inside the cap, you'll find a little switch. Mine is a little gummy, but it looks fine. On the handle itself, you'll find the switch pops into a divot and closes the circuit to allow the light to turn on. This also looks okay. Next, I tested continuity between the parts that should be connected. There should be continuity between the center post in the housing and the large right side copper surface in the handle but I don't get a beep. Then I check the ground, which is working fine. Afterwards, I test the input side. The positive wire and the smaller left side contact on the handle does beep, so everything is fine there. There is one more part that can be removed. Using a 5 8 wrench to loosen the handle from the main shaft, the handle slides right off. The bolt itself goes into a special nut that tightens the handle to the shaft. When you pull the handle off, it exposes the insulated center the positive side of the circuit goes through.
Testing the center of the main shaft and the little post out on the end, I get a beep. So the problem is towards the handle. I realized when I took the bolt out that there was some springiness to this piece and the nut wasn't overly tight. To test my theory about whether this was all I had going on, I pushed the handle into the shaft and tested the right contact in the end post again and I found that I had continuity. Problem solved. Now I'll have to put it all back together. To start, I put a little dry lube on the shaft. I don't know if this is really necessary, but it felt like the right thing to do, so I did it. I like using this dry lube from WD-40 because it doesn't attract any dirt. I then cleaned off the contact surface of any dry film just so that it would have good contact. Putting the handle back on is pretty easy. You just slide it on and try and get the gears to line up. Just jiggle it until it goes in. Now you can loosely reinstall the special nut and bolt. Next, I lined up the handle to be 180 degrees below the light post on the exterior. You could technically have this in any orientation for your application. In my case, it sort of blocks the mirror, so sometimes I consider rotating it. After that, you just tighten it up, make sure everything rotates correctly and spins, and it does. I then retested the connection to make sure everything was good. I have continuity, so everything is working. So all I need to do now is put the end cap back on. This is pretty straightforward. You just slip it back on and use the two Phillips head screws to tighten it back into place. The final check was to make sure that the continuity would turn on and off as you use the switch. So I went ahead and did that. When the switch is on, it works. When the switch is off, it doesn't. So that's how it should function. So it looks like I have everything back to where it needs to be. Installing the LED lamp kit is pretty easy. The unit comes with some wires and a diagram and you use the new wires that come with the kit in place of the old ones. The diagram says you should put the split terminals between the screw head and the lock washer before tightening. I had trouble getting one of the screws to open up enough to allow this, and at first I did it wrong. It probably doesn't matter, but I went back and fixed that one with some fiddling. Next you're ready to install everything back together. You'll put the housing back on, install the grounding ring terminal, your lock washer, and then the original nut. Once you've tightened that down, you'll slide the bullet terminal back onto the post. At this point, everything is connected electrically. The kit comes with new foam inserts. They stick into the housing and press against the back of the LED lamp. Once the inserts are installed, you'll need to line everything up and push the LED lamp into the housing. Make sure you have the Unity logo in the correct orientation and line up the little side features so that it all goes together nicely. The unit doesn't really click into place or anything like that and you just sort of have to feel it. It took me a little bit to feel confident that it was in the correct position.
to finish it up, you put the outer ring back on and turn it clockwise. And finally install the screw that you took out initially. And there we have it. I installed the LED lamp kit and everything's working well. The light is much brighter and everything's tight and rotates as it should. Here's a quick demo in the dark. The LED lamp is very focused and shines out really far and is quite bright. The old lamp, which is barely working anymore, I have shining for a moment. You can see it's not as bright. And then I lose focus on it because it's falling apart inside. And it's sort of like the end of this video. I don't know how to end it. So, bye.